Living End isn't dead. You heard me correctly. There's builds out there with Ardent Plea and Demonic Dread, but today we're doing something a little bit different. Instead, we're going to be playing Bloodbraid Marauder from Modern Horizons 2. Let's go check it out. This is the list, so what exactly is Bloodbray Marauder from Modern Horizons 2? Well, for one and a red, you get a 3-1 that can't block. And then if you have Delirium, which is four different card types in your graveyard, you can Cascade. It is guaranteed to find Living End, even though you are playing a different card in this deck that the Legacy deck plays, Incubation Incongruity. So for one mana, either a blue or a green, you get to look at the top five, put a creature card to your hand. So that finds your Shardless Agent or your Marauder or just something that cycles to help find your key spells or you can pay three mana and exile a dothy void walker and then they get a token that token when it hits the graveyard vanishes for living end so that's kind of nice and uh this just provides you additional removal in your deck for you know cards that we care about additionally in order to support that blood marine marauder we are playing colossal sky turtle that counts as both an enchantment and a creature that also answers you know uh primeval titan dothy void walkers you know large things that we care about and when it comes back it's a six five flyer with ward so it's difficult to answer we also have subtlety that answers creatures like dothy void walker but it also answers to fairy time raveler so our deck is full of answers that even the old living endless never had and that's because we're playing this unique card instead of ardent plea or demonic dread and i think that this list could be the best one moving forward it's just a thesis that i have and today we're going to try to find out if that's even true and uh one thing that i like about this list is that when you play shardless agent you could cascade into your marauder giving you five power before the living end even resolves additionally we are playing a few more fetch lands today to help support this card just because we need to hit land in the graveyard we're also playing Waker of Waves instead of something like Striped Riverwinder. Just more ways to get different card types to the graveyard is very, very valuable. And that's what we're looking to do here. Speaking of which, this card counts as both an instant and a sorcery. So that helps just like Colossal Sky Turtle counting as enchantment or creature or Architects of Will being artifact or creature. And I think that's really nice. So another hidden feature of this deck is that this card, it's blue and green. We need blue cards for Force Negation. That is a concern that I've had with a lot of the other lists featuring Demonic Dread or even Ardent Plea. We don't have to worry about that here today. And it also supports Endurance and Force of Vigor out of the sideboard, which I haven't seen any other list do so far. So I think that this is likely the most balanced Living End list so far, but let's see if it's the best one in this league. I'll see you in match number one. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsroom.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to the first match. We are on the play. So we've opened up a living end, which isn't ideal, which means we have two more left in our deck. But I do like this hand, so we're going to try it. We'll keep. We'll play first turn Scalding Tarn and pass. Our opponent does the same. Okay. Let's fetch. We should probably grab a red source here, so I'll grab the steam vents. Ouch. Cycle the Architects of Will and the Archive Trap, so we're facing Mill. We mill the Living End. That is not good. We only have one more Living End in our deck. And now they're going to Surgical it. Welcome to Modern. <laughs> Brutal. Yeah, and we don't have a Force of Negation here. So if we want to win this, we now have to play a fair game. Absolutely devastating. Okay. We draw Grief. Yikes. Another Grief, okay. Might as well use the Grief here. I think we'll take the Visions and hope that they get stuck on mana. Pass the turn. They select an Undercity Sewers and they put an Archive Trap to the Graveyard. They did not find that land, or so I believe they didn't. We will now Waker of Waves. Let's take the Bloodbraid Mar uh, Marauder. Let's start a Clock. Another Waker. I am the Beatdown. We have revealed our entire deck and now we're passing. 
and except they cycle a fractured sanity. I have not milled over a force of negation yet. That's definitely a card I'm interested in here. I think we want to subtlety this uh, crab. We'll exile a waker of waves. Target the crab. And they put the crab on the bottom. Okay. Can the blood braid marauder get the job done? They are at 17. We'll attack for three. I only have one grief in my deck. So I don't know if I'm super interested in trying to wake her for it. I could just cycle the street wraith first and try to hit another marauder. That might be better. So we'll cycle the street wraith. Charlotte's agent. Okay. I think I'll pass here. So I can use the waker to dig for force of negation or just the third land for the shardless agent, which is guaranteed to hit another marauder at this point. They cycle fractured sanity. I'm going to allow that to happen. My graveyard looking pretty thick right now. 23 cards left. And it looks like they're struggling to find that extra land. Use the waker. Oh boy. Okay, so... Does another Shardless Agent help me? I think the first one's going to get the job done, so I'll take the Architects. Would love third land here. Another Street Wraith. I'll go to 19 cards left in deck cycle. There we go. And now we'll play the Shardless Agent. Cast a Blood, Bra Blood Brain Marauder. I'm going to struggle with that all league. Just a warning. If that bothers you, you might not want to watch this video. The fact that I can't talk. Alright, so now we'll attack them to 11. Aya. Pass the turn. They found their third land. Come on, force and negation. There's still four of them left in my deck. There we go. Feeling a lot better about this now. Swing. They're at three. Are we really going to win a game where I had my living ends extracted on the first turn of the game? Okay. They feel the ruin my steam vents. That's fine. We'll pick up the forest. Archive trap. I guess I should have floated mana. Hard cast the force of negation. They found land four. Do you have something that mills 16 cards? They're at one life. Glimpse the unthinkable. I have six cards left. Another glimpse the unthinkable. Wow. What a nail biter. So they ripped land three into land four to get the job done here. What a match. Well, this is only game one, but wow. Okay. So tough that we didn't win. But this was a sweet game. We definitely want our Endurance. And because they're on Glimpse the Unthinkable, I think we want Leyline of Sanctity. Mystical Dispute's also great. We, we don't need his Colossal Sky Turtle. We also don't need Subtlety. Those are cards that can leave our deck. Uh, and that leaves us at 63. What to board out. I think I'm going to take out a couple copies of Waker of Waves. And maybe one Marauder. Let's try this. On the play for game number two. Sure, I'll keep this. We'll begin by playing Grief. Crypt Incursion. Surgical. I'm going to take the Surgical here, I think. Let's cycle Street Wraith. Okay, and then we'll play the Incubation here. This gives us four types for turn two. So this is going to be a turn two Living End. We'll take another Marauder, maybe? Or is the Waker better? Let's do the Marauder. Pass the turn. They play under city sewers. They kept the card on top. Generous end. So we have land instant sorcery creature. I'll pick up stomping ground. Ouch. Turn two. I mean, the old, uh, you know, living end deck could not do that. Here we are living our best life. I will play living end. We'll grief them. They Archive Trap, and next turn, if I want, I can Blood Braid Marauder again. We'll take the Crypt Incursion. Pass the turn. We have two Living Ends in the graveyard. So there's one left. No, we have none left. My, my apologies. We're only playing three. So I can play the Marauder as a threat, but not as a card that does anything. All right, so let's start off by attacking for nine here. hi -ya. And there's no point to cycling this Generous End, so I'm just going to play another Marauder here. They cycle a Fractured Sanity, sure. We re they see that I, I guess they probably just saw it when uh, I Cascaded. Yeah, I revealed the Leyline of Sanctity already. Pass the turn with Force and Negation up. You have a Crab. Sure, so I can put them to one here. One is not lethal. 
So they could untap with another... Well, they have to block, but... I don't have lethal, I guess. It's just my only point. Swing for lethal. They make a block, and now they'll go to one life. Pass the turn. I will float a green. Mystical Dispute. Okay, game number three. I think I'm going to resubmit the same list. Although, maybe I should have the Marauder in the deck, seeing how it really allowed a fast Cascade that game. Maybe I'll board out one Generous End. Let's try that. Sure. I mean, I could Mulligan for a Ley Line. Like, this is a 5-lander. Like, it has the Grief in it, but how good is Grief on its own? We don't have any way to cycle into the Cascade effect either. Yeah, I should Mulligan. This is much better. We'll keep this. Put a Misty Rainforest on the bottom. Turn one Ruin Crab. You got it. We find land number three. Use Scalding Tarn. Maybe I shouldn't have fetched on my main phase. I'll grab... Steam Vents. Pass the turn. I'm thinking that maybe I want to keep this in hand just as a green card for my Endurance. I, well, initially, I thought I was going to play it. And then I changed my mind. Now they're fetching. I'll mill over three more cards. We hit a Living End. Extra paid on Living End. Ugh, and I have the Endurance, but that's going to get around it. Ugh, brutal. Okay, so we're on the beatdown plan. Cycle the Architects. Another land. Okay. There's Shardless Agent. I'm going to cycle Street Wraith now because it gives me more information about what I should be fetching for. Cycle the Architects. Perfect timing, Leyline. Uh, play Misty, and then we'll pass. We will fetch in their upkeep. Although I'm probably going to get milled here, so it doesn't really matter. I just want to keep uh, as many lands in the deck as possible. We'll keep this on top because it's going to be milled, so why even bother? Plus, if it's not milled, it's a card I want to draw anyway. Okay. Mystical Dispute was a fine draw here. Let's play the Shardless Agent. Play the Blood Braid Marauder. Five power. Okay, pass. We're going to mill three more cards down to 31. I need to find a window to play this Endurance with Counterspell back up. Another crab. Very good for them. Field of Ruin. We still have the forest in our deck, but there's still six mill triggers on the stack here. They did not mill over the forest. Generous end. Let's start off by attacking for five. Aya. Play Ottawara as a land. And then let's play the Incubation. I mean, I could also just hold it as a removal spell. That might be better than digging for another Marauder. I mean, yeah, I have one Marauder, one Shardless left. The odds of hitting those is not super high. Yeah, I'll just pass here. They hit another land. Okay. I have 18 cards left. On their end step, let's... Well, actually, hmm... No, I don't think I want to do that. Give them a 3-3 when I'm trying to attack for lethal doesn't seem like the best move. Let's just untap. Another Endurance. That was huge here. I guess I need to be afraid of extra paid on Endurance. I didn't consider that until now. So maybe on their upkeep I should try to use Endurance. And I say on their upkeep because if they had the extra paid, they would have used it already. They know that I have the Endurance in hand. We'll float blue. Grab the basic forest. And then on their end step, let's hard cast Endurance here. They drown in the lock. We will Mystical Dispute. And now Endurance resolves. We'll target ourselves. Okay, now we have a full deck. Crab number three. You got it. Another Field of Ruin. They have one card in hand. Alright, so we still have 36 cards. They only need to block one creature here to live. So they're choosing to block two. Which is fine. Yeah, the growing crab bounces off the agent, so that makes sense. We'll float another green here. The question is, is their last card in hand another counter spell? Attempt to hard cast endurance. It resolves, we'll target ourselves. Okay, so I will mill over nine cards here. And with the Oboro in play, next turn they're guaranteed to mill at least six. Under city sewers. Okay. Another Incubation. Let's cast this. We are hopefully going to find another Endurance here. We did not, and so we find Charles Agent. There is one Endurance in the Graveyard. Incubation again. Guess we'll take a Grief. Attack for Lethal. 
Sweet. All right. Well, we won match number one without living end. How sweet is that? But there's still four more matches left to go. Hopefully we win those as well. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Round number two, we're on the draw, and we've opened up a pretty good hand here. The only thing that I dislike is that we actually have a living end in hand, but everything else is fairly good. We have, you know, two card, uh, card types already. We have Waker of Waves. Like, this is a solid hand. Wooded Foothills, okay. Grief, let's make good use of this uh, living end, I suppose. What an insane draw. So now I can have turn two living end again if I want. Let's take a lightning bolt. Actually, no, it's... Yeah, I can come back later for the tribal flame, so we'll take bolt. Play the basic island, and let's play the incubation. Take subtlety. Okay, good find. They select a triome here. We're going to let this first uh, brawler resolve, just because it's going to go to the graveyard when we cast living end anyway. So it's sort of a win-win. You got it. 5-3 trample on turn 2 is certainly strong. I'm going to play Steam Vents here and pass the turn. And my plan is to subtlety their creature, and then we'll wake her waves, untap, and have an overwhelming board presence. That's my goal. I'll go to 13. All right, and there's the second creature. I'm going to wake her of waves now. So we have creature, instant, land. I'm sorry, creature, instant, sorcery, and now we have land. I'll take Misty Rainforest. So now we have land. And I can now subtlety this, and then we'll untap in Living End. I mean, I could have just let this resolve as well, because they would both go to the graveyard. Maybe my play here for extra power and toughness is a little bit greedy. They put it on the bottom anyway, so it worked out. Before we Living End, I'm going to Commercial District and see if I can hit another creature. Boom. Love it. Free value. And now we'll play the Bloodbraid Marauder. I mean, to me, this seems nuts. Like, this seems so much better than Ardent Plea so far in this league. We'll cast Living End. We're going to be able to discard the Tribal Flames, leaving them with one card in hand. And the opponent concedes. Love that. Game number two versus the five color Zoo deck. We likely want Subtlety. Um, not sure if we want any of the other cards. They are a Teferi Time Raveler deck, but we do have Subtlety and Force Negation. Maybe you could board in Leyline to stop all their burn spells. Also stops Endurance if they have it. I don't hate that. And maybe we'll board out Waker of Waves. Let's try this. On the draw in game number two. So we have Land, Enchantment Creature. I think that this is worth keeping. Living End, once again, being in my opening hand is not ideal, but this hand is good. Turn one, Windswept Heath for a Breeding Pool. Okay. A while in the coddle, you got it. We ripped the grief again. How lucky. Draw like this, you can never lose. All right, get griefed. Leyline binding. I think we just take the Kavu here. The Kavu is definitely like the scariest thing. Maybe that's a reason to leave it? I don't know. Because now when we live again, they're going to get the Kavu back. All right, so now they can play while in the coddle. I guess they're choosing to do that post combat. I don't know what their plan is. I'll go to 17. Rest in peace. Well, I am obligated to counterspell this, so we will play Force of Negation, removing one of the turtles. And then we'll fetch for a commercial district. Surveil. That can go to the graveyard. Generous Ent. Not a bad draw here. I actually like that quite a bit because it's going to eat up the territorial Kavu in combat. All right, so they're going to attack for three again. I'll go to 13. Wild Nakato number two. So they have two cards in hand, and we know one of them is a Leyline Binding. On their end step, let's bounce one of the Wild Nakatos. Could have done that in combat, I suppose, to save three damage, but I don't know. I wanted the option. We will cycle the Generous End, grab the Basic Forest, and let's play the uh, Bloodbraid Marauder. 
cast Living End. We have one Living End left in our deck. And I could put the Blood Braid back on top of my deck to Cascade again next turn if I so choose. I don't think I'm going to, though. Our opponent does have the ability to cast Leyline Binding. They bolt the Subtlety instead. So now they can't play the Leyline Binding. That's weird. Okay. I think that they should have fetched, played Leyline Binding, and just accepted they weren't going to cast their bolt. But what do I know? Pass the turn. They now have all five types. They played the Wild and the Coddle. They have one unknown card still in hand. Subtlety, okay. So if I swing out, what happens? Like they chump the Blood Braid with the Kavu. They can't block here, they can't block there, so then they block there. I think that's fine. I would go to eight. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to swing out here. Like, the food token is the difference maker here. I can play a little bit more aggressively and not die to burn spells. We'll play the Hedge Maze, Surveil 1, Bin Street Wraith, and I'll gain 3 life on my own turn. So I go up to 16. The Kavu attacks. They're going to discard a card and draw a card. They discard a land. I'll go to 11. So I can't think of a card that gets them out of this. Um... Like, even if it was Tribal Flame's Lightning Bolt, I'm still alive. Exactly. So, all right, we got match number two. We are now 2-0, three matches left to go. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Round number three, we're on the play. Our opponent reveals a Kahira the Orphan Guard. This hand seems pretty good to me. I will keep. I'm just going to play Hedge Maze and Pass, though. I want to keep this Architects around. And there's our Cascader. We'll put that on top. Pass the turn. Windswept Heath, okay. Play Misty Rainforest, and then I'll pass the turn. So right now we have land, creature, assuming that I use this Architects of Will, um, to exile. So that would be our artifact, or I could find another black card. They select Elegant Parlors, their land. They surveil away a Cosmic Rebirth, okay, sure. And now a Lush Portico. They kept that card on top. End step will cycle Generous End. Go select another land. We, we're kind of flooded at the moment. I'll grab the basic in case of Blood Moon shaped things. And then we'll fetch. Grab the Commercial District. I think I'm going to bin that. We don't need it. Charless Agent. So I am more likely to hit a Living End than I am a Marauder. So I think I'm supposed to take the chance. Alternatively, if I cycle the Architects... It gives me artifacts, so I'd have creature land artifact that's still not good enough. Well, let's grief them. They solitude the grief, okay. Exiling prismatic ending. We'll take the fable of the mirror breaker. With the solitude in the graveyard, am I supposed to be more aggressive here? Because the solitude's going to come back and just exile the generous end. So then it's their solitude versus my two little dirtily creatures. I don't think I'm supposed to do anything. I think I'm supposed to just pass here. They play land. We'll fetch. Grab the steam vents, I guess. I don't think they're playing Blood Moon. Another land. So flooded. All right, play it and pass. Land number four. So they could choose to play Omnath here. Or they could draw to Fairy Time Raveler. That's brutal. Okay. Our opponent just got a huge leg up in this game. We will fetch. Grab the Breeding Pool. Another Blood Braid Marauder. I only have one Atawara in my main deck that deals with this Teferi. Play the Stomping Ground. I guess I'm supposed to just play the Marauders here. And then pass the turn applying some pressure to the Teferi. So they can Prismatic Ending plus Teferi Bounce next turn. They Surveil away a Renin 6. That's some confidence. When I have double Blood Braid Marauder. Unless you already have one in hand. They choose to play Omnath, okay. 
they bounce one of the Marauders. I would love here if I could draw a Colossal Sky Turtle. It would be insane. Instead, we find Force of Negation. Play the land. We know that they have Prismatic Ending next turn. So even if I play this Marauder, it's not going to be good enough. But I guess our out is still just drawing Colossal Sky Turtle. Okay, pass the turn. We have three Sky Turtles in the deck. They go up to 26. They put Kahira to their hand. And now they Prismatic Ending one of the Blood Braids. Please, deck. Colossal Sky Turtle. Pretty please. Another Shardless Agent. Let's play it. I am not going to cast the Living End. Pass the turn. They plus the Teferi up to four. So now if they play the Kahira and I draw Turtle, we still can't kill the Teferi Time Raveler. They surveil the card to the top. There's the Kahira. And their Omnath now has Vigilance. So they're able to chip in some damage while protecting Teferi. Subtlety. I guess we'll play Subtlety here. Pass the turn after that. They bounce the Subtlety. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. I cannot respond. There's still a Teferi Time Raveler in play. I will go to 11. We draw a Living End. Not ideal. Let's try to hardcast Subtlety again. It resolves, and then we're going to pass the turn. They have five cards in hand, the Resolving Fable. They only discard one, and it's another copy of Omnath. So that means that they probably have the answer to Subtlety, right? I'll block with my Shardless Agent. Another Teferi Time Raveler. Yeah. Bounces the Subtlety into the One Ring. They're definitely in a commanding spot here. Another Shardless Agent. Play Subtlety again, I guess. Nothing else I can do. The One Ring brings them to 32. They get a lot of looks here. They plus to Fairy. I mean, they have Prismatic Ending. I have to imagine there's Leyline Binding in their deck. They have plenty of answers to this subtlety. They play a land, they trigger the Omnath, they grab another land. To Fairy number three. I'm good to pick it up from here. We can just go to game number two. We definitely want the fourth subtlety and these Mystical Disputes. I don't think we necessarily need Colossal Sky Turtle. That's a card that, even though it does work well with our Blood Braid Marauders, it, there's not a lot of targets for it. So I think it's a little sketchy. That brings us to 61. We can set out a Waker. And I think that this looks pretty reasonable to me. Let's submit. On the play for game number two. Sure, keep. Play first turn, Scalding Turn, and just pass. Sacred Foundry, you got it. On their end step, we'll fetch, and I think I want to grab a Surveil Land here. And that Surveil Land will be Hedge Maze. Keep the Subtlety. Cycle Street Wraith. Waker of Waves is a good find. We'll play Steam Vents. Ouch. And let's Waker. I think I want the, um, the Instant Sorcery Incubation over Shardless Agent here. I know that I don't have a Cascader, but there's a chance that we Cascade into a Blood Braid Marauder, and I want to have the ability to guarantee that we have, um, you know, Delirium. So right now I have a Surgical Extraction Waker of Waves. Good deal. You got it. You got it. When it plays land number two, sure thing. Another copy of Subtlety. Let's Incubation here. Actually, I guess I should use green mana in case I Incubation into the Marauder, and then I cycle into an untapped land. Instead, we find Grief. Good pickup. I want the Architects. I guess I already have an Artifact in the Graveyard. So let's Grief them. They fetch in response and surveil one. Omnath goes to the Graveyard. And now Grief. Surgical Extraction on Street Wraith. I'm going to cycle these. Force of Negation. This is my own turn, so we can't counterspell the Surgical. Okay. So they'll exile all of my street rates. That's fine. Endurance, Supreme Verdict, Omnath. I guess the pick here is actually the Supreme Verdict. Is that crazy? I mean, I do have another grief. I could just discard the Verdict later. Yeah, that's probably the move. Let's take Endurance. They play the Breeding Pool tapped. We find the Blood Braid Marauder. But I feel like it's actually better for them than it is for me at the moment. So we're going to wait. We have four types. It's just our opponent had double surgical and endurance this game. Land number four. They play an Omnath. I'm going to subtlety this. 
I mean, I could also just Mystical Dispute it. Because they already have an Omnath in the graveyard and they can only get one back. Okay, let's do that. They have two cards, one of which is Supreme Verdict. Generous End. So that's the big beater I've been looking for here. Let's cycle the Generous End. We can go grab another Surveil Land. Commercial District. And then we'll play the Commercial District. I don't think we need another Force of Negation. That can go to the graveyard. Ren and Six. Let's subtlety that. Exiling the Force of Negation. We'll put the Ren on... Well, I guess they get to choose, but I'm targeting Ren. And they put it on top of their deck. We draw land number four. So I'm going to play the land. So the question is if we subtlety now or not. And I think I'm still going to wait a turn. Because I can just subtlety the Ren and Six again. Ren and Six is once again back. And I'm going to hard cast the subtlety. They still have two cards in hand. We know one of them is Supreme Verdict. Another Bloodbraid Marauder. Attack. We'll play the Marauder. Cast Living End. So they're going to get Endurance plus Omnath back. And they'll get to draw two from the Omnath triggers. They targeted themselves with the Endurance. Okay. Teferi Time Raveler. Supreme Verdict. I mean, we just have to take the Verdict, right? Or I let them Verdict, and then I... Cascade again. And now they don't have a Teferi. Okay. Maybe that's not the right move, but oh well. Okay. They fetch. And now they generate four mana. They get to play the Ren in six. Get back their land. They put Kahir to their hand. So they're not going to Supreme Verdict. Interesting. On their end step, we will gain three. Subtlety. Okay. So we swing out at them, they eat the subtlety and the generous end. I mean, this seems reasonable to me. They're going to double block the generous end. That was not on my bingo card. Yeah, that can't be right. This was the block I was expecting. Okay, so they're going to do that too. So they're going to take five here, and I'll pass the turn. They return a land to their hand, four mana. Four mana that doesn't cast Supreme... Well, I guess it does cast Supreme Verdict. My apologies. Uh, they want to get their chip damage in. Yeah, of course. I go to 11. So there's the Verdict. That's fine. So the question is, do I want to try to flash in Subtlety on the end step or not? I think I do. Okay, so now we can untap. And ideally, I would draw a black card here. There we go. Let's attack them. And now we'll Grief, exiling the Architects of Will. Endurance Dovin's Veto. We'll take the Dovin's Veto. And let's uh, Blood Brain Marauder. Cast Living End. So my opponent does get to draw a card here. They select a Zagoth Triome. So they must be out of Surveil Lands. Leyline Binding. That was their draw off of the Omnath. Pretty good. It will exile my Generous End. It's actually a pretty big deal here. Discard the Endurance. Okay, so they're back at 9. Now they're at 13. They return a hand to their hand using Ren and Six. They don't have one. They could have fetched the opted not to. On their end step, we will gain three. The draw of Leyline Binding off of the Omnath was insane. They also could have killed a Blood Braid with the Ren and Six and chose not to. They're fetching now. And they do have a Surveil Land to grab. So they go up to 16. So they're just trying to stay at a healthy life total. We'll swing out. So they're at 2. I'm at 14 and they can attack for 12. So the Ren and 6 almost kills me here. I could Living End again, but I think it's almost better to just to play Shardless Agent as a blocker. And I don't believe I want to... Oh, I do want the Blood Braid Marauder. That's definitely a card I want here. But I don't want to cast the Living End. So an additional 5 power there. Huge. They plus the Ren... So they'll play the land, they'll gain four life. They can fetch on my turn, so that puts them to five and they go up. No blocks, I'll take nine. So they'll be at nine life, I'm swinging out. I mean, it depends on what's in their hand, I guess. Five mana. Ugh, solitude. Yep, that's not good for me. And now they're fetching. The solitude draw might have done it. They go up to 9 and they have a 4-3 lifelinker. I think they got me. So I can swing out. They'll take 4? Yeah, they just, uh, they stabilized. Brutal. 
Okay, so we're going to lose this game. Uh, we are now 2-1-1, two, two matches left to go. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Let's bounce back after that tough loss. We're on the play. So this seems fine to me. We'll keep. We have two of four types for the Blood, Bla <laughs> Blood Braid Marauder. First turn, we'll play Commercial District, milling over the Architects of Will. So there's two types. Next turn, we have Misty Rainforest. So we found the other, other Hedge Maze. So I guess we'll Surveil. Well, there's three types. Pass the turn. It's a little awkward that I drew the Hedge Maze because now if I want to fetch, Dothy Voidwalker would stop me from getting Delirium. I'll just pass here. Our opponent's holding open Orcish Bowmasters. We will respond to the Bowmasters. Oh no, I can't believe it. They had a Bowmasters this whole time? Shock face. We'll grab Basic Island. Cycle the Generous End. Go grab the Basic Forest. Cycle the Street Wraith. We find Ottawara. And then we'll use Waker of Waves. And we'll take Street Wraith. And then we'll cycle the Street Wraith. Okay, we have a graveyard full of creatures. Demolition Field. That's an odd choice, but maybe they're on monoblock control or like coffers then. It's worth noting I don't have another basic to go search out. They're now going to use it in my upkeep, which is fine. We find the Sky Turtle. I'm going to hold that for now. I'm just going to cast Living End. Okay. Play Blood Braid Marauder. I have one more Living End left in the deck after this one. Cast the Living End. Goodbye, Bowmasters. We'll target them. And I don't need two subtlety, so I'm not going to do that. We do get a food token. We'll put the land on the bottom. Shield right in the middle. Cling to dust on the top. Pass the turn. Cabal Coffers. So now they have four mana. The one ring. Sure. They draw a card. We drew the other living end. A terrible draw here. I have no more living ends left in the deck. Okay. We'll play our land and pass. Our opponent takes one from the one ring. They activate the one ring to draw two. They now have eight cards in hand. We know that they just drew a swamp. They play the swamp. They make four black mana with Cabal Coffers. They play Shield Red. On the end step, I will gain three life. Trying to think if I want to Sky Turtle here. I think the answer is yes. They can cast the Cling to Dust and gain three here. Or gain two, I'm sorry. But they could have gained three if they selected the Sky Turtle itself. So they're at 21. I haven't done the math yet if that's lethal. Here's 10. Uh, no, we have more than lethal. So they would need a removal spell here for one mana. We just drew Force of Negation. Okay, swing for lethal. Hiya. And they do have a removal spell, but they didn't play it at the right time, and now I get to punish them. Sweet. Off to game number two. We likely want Force of Vigor for Leyline of the Void. I think we're definitely interested in Leyline of Sanctity as well. I don't think this is a subtlety matchup, so we can board those out. Leaves us at 63. So I also don't think that Sky Turtle's amazing here, but it does bounce Dothy. Well, actually, they might have Dothies in their deck. Do I want the subtleties then? A lot of cards coming in. All right, we'll board out Waker of Waves. That's a card I'm definitely okay boarding out. Could also just board out Grief. Maybe that's not the craziest thing to board out Grief. Bring Waker of Waves back in. Let's try this. This is a hand we will keep. And there's Leyline of the Void. So with this hand, I'm fairly capable of just playing the beatdown roll and not necessarily needing to, you know, uh, living end to win. We'll play a Misty and pass. They play a second land. We will fetch. Grab Commercial District. Surveil. I'm going to keep that one on top. Play the Hedge Maze. We'll surveil again. So this is interesting because it's so bad against Bowmasters. I think I'm going to put it to the graveyard. And set Bowmasters, yep. So why not subtlety here? 
I don't think Bowmasters is worth two cards. My game plan here is that I'm going to be a control deck that eventually just plays subtleties. We'll make a green. Really awkward that I have the other basic in my hand. They attack. I'll take two down to 16. I will counter this. So we will exile the Colossal Sky Turtle, I think. They have three cards remaining. We drew the answer to Leyline. Okay. I think I'm going to just pass here. Uh, another Field of Ruin. And I drew both basics. Yeah. On the end step, I will kill the Leyline of the Void. They destroy my land. That's going to happen. We find Generous End. Let's cycle it for another land. Hopefully they don't have a third Field of Ruin effect. I think I want the Breeding Pool. Like, am I supposed to save the Red Source for later? Like, I don't actually need red mana right now. And I could even hold the Breeding Pool for a turn if I wanted. But, I don't know. I mean, like, is it silly? Another thought sees. I will counter Exiling Subtlety. Karn the Great Creator. Brutal. I mean, I guess I could have subtletyed that. But, like, I lose my Cascader if I do so. They pick up Chalice of the Void. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I was supposed to subtlety there. Ay ay ay. I feel like I've lost this one. I'm just going to go to the next game. I'm going to swap one Turtle with one Waker. Like, we haven't seen Dothy yet, and Waker helps with Delirium. On the play for game three. No lands. Unfortunate. Okay. Um, I guess we keep this. Bottom and Architect? No, I might need the Architects to hit lands. Bottom Subtlety? And they have Leyline. Island, pass the turn. Okay, I have to play into the Leyline this game just because I don't have lands. So we'll cycle. We find the Marauder. Cycle the Architects. I'm going to pass the turn. And there's the Dothy. Yep. <sighs> I bottom the Subtlety like a dummy. We find Force of Vigor, but now they have Dothy Voidwalker. Ay ay ay. If I had one more land, I could... Well, two more lands, I could cast this. I guess I'll cycle Street Wraith looking for land number two. We do find it. I won't pay the life. Okay. I don't think I'm going to Force of Vigor yet, because I don't want the Dothy to collect cards. We find another Force of Vigor. I will Waker of Waves. Take the Misty. Play Misty. Pass the turn. Urborg. The Stone Brain. What a hateful deck. Alright, I am priced into Force and Negationing this Stone Brain. They attack for 3, I'll go to 12. I'm going to keep the Misty around because it could be used later to Surveil. Pass. Th or actually, none of these things have counters. So I guess I can wait. Demolition Field. They swing. We'll exile the Voidwalker and give them a 3-3. Earn the Great Creator, you got it. Trying my best here, but their opponent's deck just has a lot of problematic cards for us. Chalice of the Void. Yep. We find Steam Vents. I will not pay two life. We can pass the turn. The Frog will attack. We'll take three. I go to nine. Karn will minus again. And they select the One Ring. Sure. On their end step, we'll fetch. Let's grab Stomping Ground. No, maybe... So if I grab the Force, I don't lose two life, but then I don't have a land later for this Demolition Field. I don't know what to do. I'll go to six. We'll hard cast the Force of Vigor, destroying the Leyline of the Void and the Chalice of the Void. Okay. Force of Negation. I think I'm, will, I'm going to be passing the turn. They draw two. Thoughtsies resolves. They take Force of Negation. I'm not terribly surprised by that. They attack for three. I'll go to three life. Another Dothy. We'll fetch in response. I guess my hope here is to surveil into two card types. So like creature enchantment, uh, artifact creature, that sort of thing. Instant sorcery. Surveil. Another land does not do it. So I think we've lost. And then they suspend a profane tutor. They plus the Karn. Sure. We drew another land. So unfortunately, we got crushed this round. We are now 2-2 two and two with one match left to go. 
With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. The fifth and final match, and we'll keep. Commercial District, sure. We're playing the Mirror Match. Okay. We drew Living End. <laughs> Not ideal. We'll also play a Commercial District. And let's put Waker of Waves to the Graveyard. Pretty good card to have in the Graveyard in the Mirror Match. They play Verdant Catacombs for a basic forest. Ren and Six. So it's not the mirror match. Okay. I'm not really sure what they're up to. We draw another generous end. Let's cycle one. So far we have creature in the graveyard. I'll grab a hedge maze and then we'll play that. Street Wraith can go to the graveyard. Pass the turn. They play land number three. I think this is just red green food, if I had to take a guess at this moment. They pick up the fetch land again and just pass. Misty Rainforest, so that puts land to our graveyard for types. I'll send it back. So you might be asking, why not Shardless Agent? I could hit the Bloodbraid Marauder, and then that would be bad. So instead, we're just going to play a little bit more conservatively here and just take one turn off. They plus the Ren again. Just land go. On the end step, we'll fetch. Grab a basic island, cycle a generous end, we'll grab the basic forest, cycle architects of will, so this puts artifact to the graveyard, so we now have three types, find steam vents, cycle the architects, we find a blood braid, and a subtlety. So I could YOLO the shardless agent and just say, hey, I have two living ends in the deck, three blood braid marauders, so it's worse than 50%. Or I can just play my forest and pass holding up the subtlety. That's probably the move here. They cycle Street Wraith, okay. They cycle a Tranquil Thicket. And now they return the Thicket. So th next turn the Ren and Six can ultimate. They cycle the Thicket once more. Still eight cards in hand. They're tapping for two green mana. Finale of Devastation. Yeah, I mean that's going to resolve here. They have an Asmo, sure. They find the cookbook, they play cookbook. So they can make one food right now, which is not enough to kill my subtlety. You need two foods to sacrifice to Asmo to kill subtlety. On the end step, I will flash in the creature. No targets. We now have a 50-50 to hit living end. So maybe I'll take these chances. We'll attack the Ren. Shardless Agent. They don't use the cookbook. We hit Bloodbraid Marauder. Along with two of the instant sorcery, so we do not have delirium. But we do get to put five power in play. Not the worst thing. We'll play a stomping around. Pass the turn. They discard Ox of Agonis. There's a saga, sure. They plus the rain, getting back Tranquil Thicket. They cycle. They're going to attack. I'm not blocking. I'm at 16. They play another Asmo, the Legend Rule. But they do get another Underworld cookbook out of their deck. Sure. They create a food token by discarding Misty Rainforest. And another food token discarding Vernon Catacombs. Okay. So we can now... I was My plan this turn was actually hardcast Generous End, but now we could play a Living End. We'll swing out. They kill my Subtlety, sure. They block my Shardless Agent and then take three, or will you use your food tokens? They do not. All right, so let's play the Incubation. We'll take Grief. Play the Grief, Exiling Living End. They Galvanic Blast me, I go to 12. You got it. A pair of Renin Six, sure. We'll cycle Generous End, grabbing our last Forest out of the deck. Play that for turn. And another copy of Blood Braid Marauder. Living End. So our opponent's going to discard their hand and draw three. Asmo will find another Underworld cookbook. We'll put the Sky Turtle on the top. We'll take the Traverse the Uvenwald and put Verdant Catacombs on top of their deck. Okay. We have a large board. They create a large construct. 
they deal one to the waker of waves, which means that the Asmo can now kill the waker of waves by dealing itself six damage. They create a food token. They play another Renin six. They kill the blood braid. That makes sense. And they make another food token. Okay. And a fourth cookbook. So they can kill two creatures here. Oh, they don't have a card for the fourth cookbook. So they can block five. So our five largest creatures would be three generous ent and two three power creatures. So I could deal them 11 here, which is not lethal. But I did put Sky Turtle on top. Let's get rid of the construct token. And let's send our party sideways. Our opponent figuring out the correct blocks. I think you have to put another creature in front of generous ent, but let's see what they do. There you go. And now you can kill another creature and take 11. So our opponent will go to two life. They'll end up with just a street wraith in play. And we can use a food token, use another food token, and play a land. Send it back. They'll create a construct, and then they get to search their deck for an artifact with the mana value one or less. I'm sorry, one or zero. One or less is not accurate. They find a Mishra's Bobble. They unearth Ox of Agonis. Okay. They return Besage you to their hand. They play it as land for turn. And they traverse. They find another Asmo. So now they can play. They have four blockers. And they can kill one creature. They're just dead on board. They do have the Oval Chase Daredevil. But I think it's just too late. I mean, we're in game one and our opponent's down to ten minutes on clock. So they can kill two creatures. My apologies. But that's still not enough. Like, they're still just dead on board. Okay. I think we want the subtlety, force of vigor, endurance. It might be weird, but part of me wonders if this is a force of negation matchup. Like, it doesn't seem like it is. But I think I actually just want to board out all the force of negations. It also doesn't seem like a very good grief matchup, so maybe you could even board those out. And then bring in Leyline of the Void. Maybe just one Leyline. And we have the Miser's Ley Line. Perfect hand. Had it the whole time. Basic forest from our opponent into the Underworld Cookbook, sure. Scalding turn was a good draw, so we'll fetch. And then with the turn one incubation, we have three types in our graveyard already. We'll grab Steam Vents. Play Incubation. I will select Street Wraith. Maybe that was a little bit greedy, but it's what I'm doing. No activation of the cookbook, no turn to play. Another Waker of Waves. I'll just play Scalding Turn and pass. They pick up a Commercial District and Traverse the Uvenwald goes to exile. Besage you. So they could have destroyed my Ley Line, did not want to. They cycle a Street Wraith and they play an Inti, sure. We'll fetch. And I think I want to grab a Basic here. I don't know if these decks are Blood Moon decks, but I don't want to find out. All right, discard Waker of Waves. Maybe I should have responded to this, I don't know. We'll untap, take a draw. We find the Sky Turtle. Cycle Street Wraith. It's a land. Fetch. I think I'm going to play it a little bit slower. I'm just going to grab a Surveil Land here. Hedge Maze. Land can go to the graveyard. Pass the turn. So the alternative would have been to cycle Architects looking for a Cascade spell, but I think I'd rather just play it a little bit more safely. In their beginning of combat... Hmm, I don't even think I care about this thing. I'll just wake her waves now and be lazy. We find the Shardless Agent. I believe I do have Delirium. We have land, instant sorcery, creature. Let's play Stomping Around. Ouch, I go to nine. Cycle Architects. Another waker of waves. And then Shardless Agent. Play Living End. Three mana, four, and Endurance. Didn't see that coming, or did I? Uh, we will exile... Waker of Waves, target their Endurance, Living End. Ooh, this is a good play. So they put the Endurance on top, and now they can discard a card and play Endurance this turn. Nice play, opponent. Nice play. Yeah, you got it. Okay, so our opponent has no hand, no board. We have two Sky Turtles and an Endurance. No way. They drew the uh, fin uh, Finale of Devastation here. I knew it once they tapped two green uh, mana, and it was like, Spending costs. So that was an insane top deck for them here. It gets them another cookbook. Okay. 
I think I'm supposed to just pass here. They swing. We can now flash an endurance. I'll target myself. Put that living end back in the deck for later. And they'll kill the endurance, so the endurance will shuffle in. And I think I'll block. They cycle Street Wraith. Still holding the other Underworld cookbook in their hand. Play land number five, pass the turn. They discard the cookbook and create a food token. They attack, I will attempt here to flash in another, actually, no, I think maybe I should just bounce the Asthma with the turtle. Another finale of devastation, okay. Haywire might, interesting. Okay, we will go grab another surveil land here. Commercial district, put Street Wraith to the graveyard. So we have land, enchantment, creature. And if I want to return the Shardless Agent, that's important because I could use the Sky Turtle to get back the Shardless Agent, but then we would lose Artifact. Force of Vigor. Seems like a great card here. Hardcast Force of Vigor on the Haywire Might and the Underworld Cookbook. Pass the turn and that just gave me the fourth type for Colossal Sky Turtle into Shardless Agent. And the opponent concedes. So we went three and two. What did I think of Bloodbraid Marauder? Well... It's a little bit more high variance than a card like Ardent Plea, but it certainly felt a lot more powerful in match number two. I do think that maybe, just maybe, this deck needs to find another split card to play in the main deck that is like instant sorcery just to increase that number a little bit. Uh, I feel like right now it might be just a tiny bit low, but I think with Colossal Sky Turtle and Incubation in the main deck, maybe you don't need subtleties. It does answer to Fairy Time Raveler, but you have seven main deck ways already that are typal, or I guess they're just different card types for Blood Brain Marauder. So maybe you could shove the subtleties to the sideboard and just play another split card for consistency. But if I was playing Living End, I would be trying to break this card instead of something like uh, Ardent Plea or Demonic Dread or anything else. I think Blood Brain Marauder is probably the way forward. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And I really do appreciate you watching. So have a great day. And as always, keep storming. What you should do is like, comment, and subscribe because there's no better way to support us. And if you enjoyed this video, head over to moxfield.com and follow us there. It's truly the best deck website on the internet. We update all of our decks there regularly with the latest and greatest technology, so you're always up to date. Once again, go check out Moxfield, and thank you for watching.